Hello, this is a 15 minute video on creating 3D clothing from scratch for Roblox's marketplace. My name is Nachos, I am not a 3D artist, and I'm here to show you that anyone can start creating their own clothing items for Roblox. Clothing items, also known as layered clothing, are similar to rigid accessories with a couple extra steps to make them stretch, fit, and layer over any body shape and other clothing items. This video quickly goes through every creation step, but a longer tutorial is available on our documentation and you can refer to those resources for more details on each step of the process. For this tutorial, you'll only need Blender, Studio, and a web browser, but keep in mind that creating clothing is more advanced than creating rigid accessories. I recommend watching the rigid accessory video first if you're new to Blender or Roblox user-generated content. And some final notes before we get started, creating and sharing on Roblox is free, but the optional step of selling your asset on the marketplace requires a premium Roblox subscription, an upload fee, and a publishing advance. Remember that all user-generated content on Roblox must meet Roblox's technical and community policies. And finally, Roblox is actively developing tools to make creation easier. Keep an eye out for announcements and videos for when those tools and automations are available. To start this clothing tutorial, you'll first need to download two Blender templates from Roblox's documentation resources. You can find links to them in the description. After downloading these two files, open the clothing cage Blender file. Before doing anything else, save this as a new file for your clothing item. In the outliner, copy and paste the cage object, it doesn't matter which one, and in the viewport, right click and select parent and clear and keep transformations. This removes the parent object while maintaining the current scale and orientation. You can delete the old empty parent object in the outliner. Next, rename your objects to match the item that you're creating. Rename the other cage objects to use the same name, but make sure to keep the underscore inner and underscore outer cage affixes. To save time, you'll be shaping your clothing item out of this duplicate object, so go ahead and hide the original cage objects for now. Roblox's cage templates include vertex color data that should be cleared for your clothing item. With your clothing item selected, navigate to the Object Data Properties tab on the bottom right, and in Color Attributes, press the minus sign to remove the existing color data. With our working mesh, go ahead and trim the general shape of a long sleeve shirt. Select the main mesh and navigate to Edit Mode. Then enable X-ray visualization to access all vertices through the model. Carefully select vertices to remove and press X and delete vertices. Once you begin creating your own clothing items, you can create any shape you want, but for now, continue this process until a long sleeve shirt remains. With the basic clothing shape completed, next you'll add vertices and apply smoothing. In Object Mode, select the Mesh and navigate to the Modifier Properties on the bottom right. Add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. You can immediately apply it with the drop-down using default settings. In the Viewport, right-click your object and select Shade Smooth. Your clothing object should look smooth and ready for detailing. Since the clothing was cut out of our body mannequin, scale up the clothing to ensure it sits on top of the body cages and not inside it. First, unhide one of your original cage objects to see in the viewport. Then select your clothing mesh and press S to scale and increase the scale by a minor amount to overlay over the cage. Use G to reposition the mesh if necessary. You can always adjust the fit in more detail later, but this ensures that your clothing sits on top of your body. Next in the process is sculpting detail. At the moment, the mesh base currently has a flat and inorganic look to it. Select the object and navigate to sculpting mode. To start, select the Elastic Deform tool and enable X-axis mirroring to make identical changes to both sides of your clothing. You may want to disable this later if you only want to make changes to one side of your clothes. The Elastic Deform tool is great for initial detail changes, like opening up the bottom of the shirt, flaring out the wrists and sleeves, and enlarging the collar. You can use F to control the radius and Shift F to control the strength of your brush. When you're ready to add cloth detail, select the Cloth tool. The cloth tool applies a natural looking wrinkle and shape to your mesh. Click and continuously drag with the mouse to apply it. After going through your first pass of changes, unhide one of your original cage objects and see how the clothing looks with the body mannequin. At this point, you may want to make additional adjustments with your sculpting tools or even adjustments back in edit mode. This is the best opportunity to ensure that your clothing shape fits naturally on top of a body and completely covers the inner cage. Use the Smooth tool to flatten out any areas that may have an unnatural looking geometry. And switch back to the Elastic Deform tool to make sure you're completely covering the entirety of your original cage shape. Try experimenting with other sculpting tools for various effects. 
When you're happy with the results, proceed onward with texturing. Texturing a clothing item first requires creating a 2D map of your 3D object. To create the 2D image, or UV map, you'll need to create seams to tell Blender how to unwrap the object. This makes it easier to control and visualize what the 2D map looks like. Switch to edit mode, then ensure that line selection mode is enabled. Find the single line that splits the front and back of your shirt and use Alt and Option click to select the entire line. Right click and select Mark Seam. Repeat this process on both sides above and below the sleeves. A red seam should effectively split the front and back of the shirt. When completed, press A to select all and navigate to UV and select unwrap. With the object selected, you can now navigate to texture paint mode and see how Blender unwrapped your UV map. Next, assign a material to your mesh. In the right side, navigate to material properties and select new. Click the dot next to base color and add an image texture. Click new and then set a name and default color and then press OK. On the left panel, set your image source to the material you just created. Now you're ready to paint on either the 2D image or the 3D object. Make sure to expand the tool slider and access your brush settings. Try experimenting with different designs and brush options, though remember to keep it simple in your first few designs. Just a quick tip that you can hold F and drag with the mouse to adjust your brush radius. And remember that Control and Command Z are one of your best friends. The last and most critical step here is to save your texture image. On the left side, navigate to Image and Save. This ensures that the image file has your latest texture painting changes. Rigging is the process of adding the standard 15 bone skeleton to the clothing item, so when equipped to any character in Roblox, the clothing item can move and bend with the character. This tutorial uses Roblox's provided armature file and attaches it to your clothing item using Blender's automatic weights feature. For more advanced users, weight painting is often used to ensure complete control on the rigging and skinning of an item. See the description for additional resources on that use case. To add Roblox's armature to your project, make sure you have the armature file saved locally. Navigate to File, Append, then navigate to the saved Blender file in your file browser. Click on the armature directory, and select the armature object and click Append. The armature should display in your viewport. The armature requires some reorienting. With the armature selected, open the item sidebar and set the X rotation to 90. Click and drag across the scale to select all axes and, while still dragging, adjust the size so the armature fits within the clothing item. After setting the orientation and scale of your armature, in the viewport, shift click the clothing mesh and then the armature to select them both in that order. Right click and select parent with automatic weights. You can test out the results of this automatic weighting by navigating to pose mode, selecting a bone, and rotating it. The shirt should naturally bend and flex, following the movements of the underlying bones. After rigging the clothing item, the next step is caging. Caging is the process of setting the inside and outside surfaces of your clothing item. This defines how the clothes wraps over a character and how additional clothes wraps on top of currently worn items. Since this shirt is intentionally designed over the top of a cage, the inner cage does not need to be altered and only the outer cage needs to stretch over the shirt to set its outside surface. The caging process is similar to the sculpting process, but before getting started, there's a few ways to set up your project to cage efficiently. Navigate to the filter icon in your outliner on the top right. Enable the selection restriction toggle. Disable the selection for your long sleeve object. This prevents you from accidentally clicking on that mesh when working with the outer cage. Next, switch your viewport shading to 3D view and enable X-ray. Feel free to adjust these settings as you work to whatever is most comfortable for you. Next, select your cage and navigate to edit mode. Similar to our earlier modeling steps, select and hide parts of the cage you don't need to manipulate by pressing the H hotkey. You can use Alt-H to unhide them later. When working with cages, it's important to use hide and not delete. Do not ever delete any vertices of any of your cage objects. With your viewport cleaned up, it's time to make some vertex manipulations to help us easily expand the cage later. This prevents our vertices from getting tangled, particularly at joints like the armpits. 
With x-axis mirroring on, use Alt-click to grab vertices in the arm near the shoulder. Press G to grab, and space out those groups of vertices away from the armpit and following the clothing. You can grab a group of vertices, such as an entire line, and press R to make a minor rotation to better match the clothing shape. This helps ensure that the cage is spread evenly later. Now that you've created some better spacing around your joint areas, switch to sculpting mode. To help with visualization, disable X-ray, then navigate to Object Properties, Viewport Display, and then set Display As to Wire. Then select the Inflate tool, and double check that X-axis mirroring is enabled. Using the Inflate tool, hold F to increase the size of your brush, and click and brush over the broad sections of your clothing until the wire cage shows through. Continue this process using a smaller brush size for more detailed areas like arms and wrists. At the end of this step, you should see the entirety of your wire cage over your clothes before you can begin smaller adjustments. The caging process is almost complete. Switch to edit mode and manually adjust any vertices that are too far or too close from the clothing mesh. Make sure that the spacing is even and that you don't delete any vertices. At the end, you should clearly be able to see your entire outer cage over your clothing mesh without any gaps. Before we export our model, it's important to follow one more best practice for all meshes imported into Roblox. Waterproofing is the concept of sealing a 3D mesh so that the backsides of a face are never exposed, even at odd angles. In this case, the clothing item needs waterproofing on the neck area, the two armholes, and the waist. To seal your mesh, select the clothing mesh and navigate to edit mode. Alt-click the line around the hole you intend to seal. Press E to extrude a new set of vertices. Click after dragging them a short distance. With the vertices still selected, right click and select Merge Vertices at Center. If you don't see this option, make sure you've enabled Vertex Selection. Press G to grab the vertices and place it within a clothing object. Go ahead and repeat this step for each opening in the shirt. Now all your Blender steps are completed and you're ready for export. Keep in mind that you may need to revisit one or more steps if there are issues bringing this into Roblox. Exporting is similar to exporting other custom assets. Remember to set the path mode to copy and click the embed texture button to keep your textures. And remember to set your scaling for FBX exports. Check out the links in the description for additional clothing export settings. Use the import 3D tool to import your model file. Check the preview to make sure everything looks good and that there are no warnings or errors that need to be addressed. You may see a warning stating the number of cage vertices do not match. You can ignore this if you're sure that you did not delete any vertices during the caging process. Now it's time to convert the model into an accessory with the accessory fitting tool. In the avatar tab, open the accessory fitting tool and click on the model in the viewport so it populates in the part field. Select the asset type to clothing, select shirt from the dropdown, and in the next screen, try applying the shirt to different models and trying different animations. You'll have an opportunity to do additional testing later. When you're ready, click the generate mesh part accessory button. It's critical to test your clothing to ensure that rigging and caging is working properly. To quickly test your model, make a copy of your accessory in the workspace, add a character rig using the Rig Builder. In the Explorer, drag and drop the accessory into the rig model to equip the clothes. Make sure that the clothes fits properly on your rig model. Open the Avatar Setup tool. Confirm the additional clothing item dialogs. In the Avatar Setup tool, test out different combinations of animations. Then try layering your clothes under and over other provided clothing references. Keep an eye out for unnatural clipping between clothing items, since holes like that may indicate an issue with caging. For assets like the puffer jacket, try changing the order to put the shirt over the jacket. The long sleeve shirt should stretch and fit over the bulkier item. When you're happy with the result of your clothing item, it's time to start the uploading and publishing process. To upload your asset, right click the original accessory in the explorer and select Save to Roblox. Complete the fields, then select Avatar Item. Submit the asset with the upload fee and await moderation. This can take up to 24 hours. Once moderation is complete, you can access your clothing asset on the Creator Hub to configure publishing and sale settings. Check out our additional resources on each sale setting, fees and commission details, and more in the description. And that completes our clothing tutorial. I want to emphasize that this is a quick introduction to a fairly advanced process that often takes much longer for industry professionals. Keep practicing and honing new skills, and also keep an eye out for additional tutorials and videos as well as features and tools from Roblox. Bye for now.